Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you're here because we're here every week talking to interesting people and uh, dealing with topical issues. And we've got an old friend coming back to The Verdict who is winding up his service in the state government. Yes, an old friend, a young man, <laughs> who's uh, winding up uh, almost eight years of very successful mm -hmm. government service here in Oklahoma. Scott Meacham is going to come talk to us and reminisce a little bit about his uh, activities and experiences at the Capitol as state treasurer and in other positions. Indeed, the eight years has gone quickly, uh, I'm sure, and uh, we're gonna hear some uh, from Scott Meacham. Let him reminisce back and, and talk about what he sees for the future of this great state. You're watching The Verdict, we'll be right back. We didn't just wake up with this problem. Barrel by barrel, dollar by dollar, we've been exchanging American security for foreign oil. Enough. We're home to a 100-year supply of natural gas, and now we know its potential. Fuel, power, cleaner air. See how natural gas is making a difference at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome back to the verdict for uh, uh, several appearances uh, he's had in the past, for his fourth or fifth appearance, whatever it may be, uh, Scott Meacham, the state treasurer of the state of Oklahoma. He did his undergraduate work in finance at the University of Oklahoma, got an MBA and a law degree from the University of Oklahoma. He practiced law privately, was the uh, CEO, president and CEO of First National Bank Elk City, uh, and then uh, became state finance director in uh, 2005 and uh, became state treasurer in 2005 and has been the state treasurer from that time to date. He's about to end his service as state treasurer and go back to private uh, practice, law practice. I'm pleased to say about that. Uh, but we're sure glad that you've mm -hmm. come on and tell us about your experiences uh, in state government. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Well, let's talk about it. Uh, has it gone quickly? Yeah, it really has. It's amazing how fast it's gone when you look Almost back. Almost eight it. years. Yeah, it is. It'll be eight years in January. So going back to those early days, is this something that, that you and Brad had planned since college, or is this something that, that just kind of <laughs> came up? Because you always hear that. Well, yeah. they were old friends, yeah. and, and, and I've heard that multiple times, and, and I've had it explained to me that, no, that's not the case at all. That, that's not how this came about. Well, you know, Brad came from a political family, so mm -hmm. he was always interested in politics. And, and even back in college, I think, I think we knew that Brad would someday be involved in politics. But I hated politics, and so I was never going to be involved in politics. So, no, it definitely wasn't part of any big plan. <laughs> well, how did it happen? Well, you know, I was, I was sitting there enjoying my life in Elk City, running the bank there and active in my community, and, and, you know, really thought I'd do that for the rest of my career. And, 
and my old friend from law school calls and he says, Scott, your state needs you. If you remember, we were facing the last big budget crisis mm -hmm. right when he came in. This was after 9-11. And, after 9-11, and after we're in that post-9-11 recession uh -huh. period. And says, Scott, you're the only one I trust to come in and figure out how to handle this. And, you know, it's hard to tell your best friend no on the mm -hmm. one hand. And the other thing was, you know, I'm a fifth generation Oklahoman and my family has been very blessed by this state and I thought it was a chance for me to give something back in, right. a, in a small way. Well in a, in a sense perhaps because you weren't so politically motivated may have made you a better candidate. Is, is that kind of what, what you're sensing? I, I think so. I think it may, I mean most people when they talk about me will say that, that I'm more, um, more direct. I, I'm more, I'm not, I don't get in all this partisan stuff. I mean, I don't view the world through a partisan Democrat Republican lens. That's just not, not who I am. And, and, and I wasn't always worried about running the net for the next race <laughs> or, or no climbing the political ladder. I, I was most concerned about using the limited amount of time I had to do the most good for the state I could do. Well, when you went into that position, did you have a preconceived idea that I'm only going to be here a little while, I mean, not forever, I'm only going to be here a little while and then I'm going back home or go back to private life? Right, yeah, I'd, I'd sort of negotiated with my wife an eight-year eight hiatus uh, from, from uh, you know, the job I had. And, and uh, my original plan was to go back to Elk City, but, but the way it worked out, you know, after eight years, your kids, your family get settled here, and, and really we love living in Oklahoma City, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to try to find a way to stay here. When you work a bank, there's a certain number of zeros after the numbers. When you run the state treasury, there's a lot more zeros. Did, did that change? I mean, was that, was that, was that clearly a, a different level of thinking and process and, and, and dealing with larger numbers? Well, you know, what I found was it's kind of interesting because we had about a $50 million investment portfolio at, at the bank, at the and bank, it was yeah. about a $5 billion <laughs> investment portfolio at the state. So the number was a lot higher, but, but the concepts you use to manage that money it is almost identical. And what I found was, when at least when I came into the office, the money management systems were much more sophisticated at my bank than they were at the state treasurer's office. Really? And, and that was based on what, just advances in technology or just people putting better policies into place? Yeah, I, I think it was mostly people putting better policies into place. Hmm. It was, it was uh, um, in a bank, obviously you're in a for-profit business. So yeah. you're, you're squeezing every ounce of earnings out of, out of the money you have. Whereas in government, there is not that profit motive and people tend to be more defensive in how they do things. Right. And so they err way on the side of being conservative and defensive. So what I found is we're holding way too much money in cash all the time, almost a billion dollars too much in cash that we weren't investing and earning, earning money on. I mean, no banker would ever do that. Yeah. I mean, you got to hold enough, but you don't want to hold too That's much. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, it, it, you, they're just averse to any risk. Exactly. In government. Well, let me take that to the next step. Uh, you apparently then made some uh, procedural changes in the state treasurer's office, and did we earn more? Yes, we, we more than tripled the earnings. I mean, we were earning about $50 million a year before I came in, and we doubled the first year, and then we went, so we went from 50 to 100 to 150, you made it to a little over 160 before you know the downturn started, but we're still earning well more than double what we were earning even with historic low interest rates because of those changes we made. Well, and I guess if there was ever any concern on anybody's part that maybe your change in policy might have been adding some risk, uh, the downturn and the continued earnings would solve that question. Wouldn't yeah, it? yeah, we actually lowered risk. I mean, you actually we actually took less what's called interest rate risk. The state can't take, we, we, can't, we don't invest in stocks and bonds, we invest in government securities. So we don't take credit risk, okay. but we do take interest rate risk. So the way we did it, we were able to lessen the interest rate risk to the state, which has served us very well during, again, the worst downturn in this nation since the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Well, you did uh, end up uh, making a statewide run for office uh, as state treasurer. I did. How did you find that experience? Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, was it difficult for you? You know, it, it was interesting. I, I, I enjoyed getting to go around the state and meet people and talk to people and, you know, be in parades in little towns all over the state. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that part. Uh, I did not enjoy the mu as much. You know, you have to raise a lot of money to run a statewide race. And, and it's hard to call people up and say, hey, I know you don't really know me, but could you give me some money for my campaign? <laughs> Um, I didn't enjoy that as much, and, and I don't, you know, the, the whole partisan deal, you know, where, 
where people just, they're either for you or against you based on what party you're reg registered yeah. with. They don't, they could care less what I'd done in the office, what my, what my training experience was, or what my opponents was. It was more how mm -hmm. I was registered. And, and that just didn't make sense to me. Right. Well, what did you learn when you're traveling the state? Did you get, did you get to all 77 counties, or did you, did it feel uh, did it feel like just a grind to, to have to campaign statewide? Yeah, well, I probably didn't make it to all 77 counties. I probably made it about 74. Yeah. I think I lost maybe five counties, so maybe I just made it 72 <laughs> counties. But, but uh, the uh, the it, it it was an interesting experience. It really wasn't that much of a grind because what would happen is you would focus more during the week on being sort of in the office on the phone raising money and then on the weekends you'd go out and travel yeah. and there'd be some difference that's what it, it really wasn't that bad and I mean it's something you know that some people like and some mm -hmm. people don't I, I I like the actual getting out and touching people and campaigning part I didn't like the fundraising yeah. part okay so you're uh, when uh, when one of the treasurer's job is kind of be looking out for revenue mm -hmm. you don't you don't um, have a whole lot to do with how much money is going to come in eight months from now, but you kind of need to know how much is going to be coming in because you've got to make all these uh, predictions. Or uh, it, that, that's not the right word. Some no. know, fill, fill me in. But how do you do that? How do you how do you look ahead and and come up with some sort of uh, of good feeling about that that this number this projection is going to be accurate? Well, we we do make predictions, and we of course we what we call them is forecasts. But we right. do we do that, and it is a prediction, and it, and it's really an educated guess. And try what you try to do is you look at historical patterns in different types of economies and then you try to 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 you know take what you know mm -hmm. and apply it to those trends and then apply it to where you think your money's going to be going forward and and that's basically what we do now it's an inexact science and so you always build in a little bit of margin of error but but that's what you do do you like the the state's revenue sources would you like to see the percentages that they get from one increase and another one decrease in other words even in a revenue neutral environment mm -hmm. are you satisfied with the with the percentages and how they come in well we get about half of our state revenues comes from the state income tax about fifty percent about twenty five percent from the state sales tax and probably about it varies 15 to 17 or so from gross production tax and then the rest from everything else. I, I think what we've done in the last few years is we've become less dependent on the income tax and more dependent on gross production. Mm -hmm. well, what we've seen is gross production is our most variable income source. And that's basically from oil and natural gas. It, it is yeah. and, and, and we've seen with the big price fluctuations in, in oil and gas that that makes a fundamental impact on the state's budget. So I think what we have to do going forward is we have to understand there's more, going to be more variability than there even than there used to be, mm -hmm. and we need to put in place systems to deal with that. Scott Meacham is our guest today. He's the state treasurer of the state of Oklahoma. We'll be right back. Most of the artwork that I produce is with colored pencil and watercolor. The subject matter that I use is, of course, Chickasaw. Most of my themes revolve around family and um, really that foundation that has been a part of Chickasaw life since ancient times. The Chickasaw Nation is a matriarchal society. You've got one lady, she's probably the oldest member of the family, that everybody goes to and that everybody reveres. That is something that every woman can look forward to in the Chickasaw Nation because they are extremely important in the family. Maybe one day <laughs> I will be a matriarch. I think this is probably the secret to the success of our government is that we still have maintained that idea that family is the most important thing and that uh, we must uh, minister to the family first and then all other things will fall into place. The oil and natural gas industry help provide a revenue that uh, feeds our schools, uh, providing a better education for not only my kids, but uh, for the children all over the state. It will allow the schools to buy better equipment, we'll be able to hire qualified teachers, and all around to have a better educational experience. The future has never been brighter for our students here. We should be very proud of the oil and gas industry in Oklahoma.
Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent, where to from here? Well, uh, uh, Scott, in the news, uh, during almost all of your time out at the Capitol, uh, you were uh, reported as have doing a lot of the negotiation with the uh, representatives of the state uh, Senate and House on budget matters particularly. Uh, how did you find that uh, interplay with uh, the elected officials in both the uh, Senate and the House? I, I, you know, I was fortunate. I, I got to be the governor's chief negotiator on budget, really big legislative issues and tribal issues. And, and it, it was interesting because we had such a change while we were there. It went from a complete Democrat control to a mix to complete Republican control. And honestly, except for, you know, maybe one or two people here and there, we had a, we had a great relationship. We had a great relationship with uh, Glenn Coffey and, and Chris Binge and, and, and their staffs this last session. In fact, I was telling somebody a little bit earlier today, you know, if we wouldn't have had such a good relationship, I think it would have been very difficult for the state to get to the budget crisis that, that we, we faced. Well, I can say that I do kind of follow these things uh, as a citizen, and I never recall criticism of you in the press or uh, public criticism of you in these negotiation uh, sessions as being uh, as somehow doing something uh, heavy-handedly. Uh, you get you get high marks for your negotiating skills and getting these jobs done. Did you ever ask yourself how in the world uh, you could assume this position at a time when the when we were in the middle of a downturn, and then you get another one before you leave? Yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's kind of the bookends of my career of public service are the two worst downturns in the state's history. But, and, and the other thing is, in the middle is the, is the greatest expansion in state's history. I mean, that shows you how much variability we've seen the past few mm -hmm. years. And, you know, as a, as a uh, you know, when I first came into to state service, I was obviously a lot younger than I am now. And I think maybe I was a little naive, and I just really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I just kind of went in and started doing the job. Well, how'd you find working with Brad Henry? I mean, he's he's your best friend or one of them, and uh, and uh, and yet you were working for him and in some really difficult matters. No, it, it it was really great. I mean, it's, it's good to work for Brad because I know him so well, and, and on the one hand, I know where he's going to be, but also he's a guy that always tries to do the right thing, and, and it's easy to work for somebody you you respect that you feel always has the state's best interest in heart and is always trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at, at how Oklahoma economy is going to be affected by national events, what draws your attention? Uh, when, when we went through the economic uh, crisis and, and Congress had to come in and, and help bail out the banks and everything, what were you thinking going through your mind of how Oklahoma was going to be impacted by that? Well, I was mostly concerned about, obviously, if there's a huge national downturn, we feel it in Oklahoma. There's just there's no way around that. But, but what I watch most in Oklahoma is the price of natural gas because we are so we're such a, and people probably don't even realize what an energy dependent state we are this is an energy dependent state and I'm it's so critical to our future that natural gas prices be at a certain level which is by the way is a little bit higher than where they are now for us to continue to grow and prosper like we have in the past as a state mm -hmm. well and, and, and you're talking about the actual drilling taking place in the state, not just the, the, the companies that are located here. I'm talking about all of it. I'm talking about the companies that are located here who, well, I mean, let's take Devon, for example. Right. They don't have, they have some going in Oklahoma, but they have a lot going on everywhere else. The health of that company r impacts how many people it employs here in Oklahoma and, and, and things it does like that. But it, so it's, it's the amount of drilling in the state, it's the price we're getting for the stuff that's already in the ground and being produced and it's our companies and their health and well-being. Uh, so many times all of us when we're leaving one position and going to do something else think to ourselves <clears throat> if I just had a little more time this is what I would have liked to <laughs> try to accomplish. Uh, any of those thoughts in your mind as you leave state government? Well the, the biggest concern I have and, and the biggest thing that I think is left undone I'm trying to sort of bring some attention to right now is the unfunded uh, situation with our teachers retirement system. We have almost a ten billion dollar unfunded liability there. It is a huge, going to be a sort of an albatross around our neck in the future if we don't start dealing with it today. So that's kind of the, my big, gosh I wish we would have got, and we did a little bit, we just didn't do enough. Well that, that, that's accrued over what period of time to that? Oh over world? 40 years. Yeah. You know. It's not something that happened no, 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 it's, recently. It's, no, it hadn't happened recently. It's just, it's a hole that the state dug itself 
over years and years and years, and you know we hadn't got it fixed yet. One kind of reverse question: If you had one tip to give to the new state treasurer, whomever it may be, uh, what would it be? Well, I think it would be to to again sort of apply Governor Henry's rule: try to always do the right thing and be be straightforward and honest with people. That's what they like. They like. They like politicians like Mick Cornett, who, who kind of, you know, they tell people how it is. That's what people want to hear. Well, tell us about the, the current state of the economy. What's it going to be like six months from now? What, what do you see three months from now? I, I think we bottomed in Oklahoma probably sometime in the spring of this year. And we've seen a gradual increase in our state collections over the last few months. We got a little bit of a bump this summer, but I'm sort of like a lot of other people and think that could have had a lot to do with the storm and Oklahoma and its own mini stimulus with the, the, <laughs> the hail storm and all the insurance money that came into the state. But uh, well, I, you saw a little bit of that yourself. Yeah, they there. did. Oklahoma yeah. City is a beneficiary of a lot oh, of that. No, it's it's unbelievable yeah. the the amount of revenue that's come in from the storm damage and the contractors. And it, that. Exactly. I mean, all these cars, all these roofs, yeah. all this stuff. It, it almost makes you want to cheer for hailstorms. Well, right? yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. As long yeah. as they as long as they hit someone else. Yeah, exactly. so I, I understand. <laughs> you, just, you just wanted to buy the materials. In yeah, yeah, City. exactly. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, what I think we're going to see until natural gas prices rebound is a slow growth uh, for the state and for Oklahoma City and, and Tulsa. And so, you know, maybe a 2% growth or 3% growth going forward. Where's the growth occurring? Well, I think it's really occurring more in recovery of national businesses. Hmm. You know, so if, we, if, you, if you say, well, the national recession pulled everybody down, including businesses in Oklahoma, then the national recovery has to pull them up a little bit too. I see. And so I think that's what we're seeing. I don't think we're going to see the kind of growth that we had before until we see the energy industry. The recover. low unemployment rate, how does, how does that affect you? Is, is, obviously it's, it's better to have it than not have it, but how does that affect your job and, and, the, and the, the economy of the state? Well, I mean, Oklahoma is fortunate because we haven't seen the kinds of unemployment that other states have had. And that means we have more Oklahomans working, more Oklahomans spending money. And, and that really helps kind of be a ballast in our economy that helps us where we didn't take it nearly as bad as everyone else because our strong unemployment as we, or strong employment as we went through. Hmm. Now, your term expires uh, December 31st? Right after the first. Yes. Right after the yes. first. Uh, what's ahead for Scott Meacham? Well, I don't like know. Like I didn't know. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you heard, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm joining this uh, famous law firm in Oklahoma City called Crow and Dunleavy. Have you heard of that firm? <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, all kidding aside, I, I'm very fortunate to uh, get the opportunity now to uh, move in the private sector and join, uh, you know, the oldest firm in Oklahoma, Crow and Dunleavy, and, and practice law. I'm going to head up their banking group, and, and really, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, we are too. Well, there's a, not, a lot of new regulations to, to know about, isn't there? I mean, the uh, banking yeah. industry's kind of gone through quite a bit of changes in the last year. Yeah, you know, what government tends to do is they tend, it tends to overreact to, yeah. to a crisis. And so we had the crisis. People criticized the regulators for stopping it, which I doubt they ever could have. But then what happens is there's a demand to make sure it never happens again, and they tend to overreact. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're having to go through that phase right now. All right. Scott Meacham, to today's guest on The Verdict. Scott, thanks for much. For, first of all, for your service to the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. And thanks for being our guest today on The Verdict. Appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate it. All right. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. 
loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. That's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Camp Myers. We just finished a show with Scott Meacham, who's wrapping up uh, two terms as the state treasurer. Yes, and uh, Scott has just done a wonderful job as state treasurer. He uh, had the additional duty that most state treasurers mm -hmm. don't have as being the chief negotiator on the budget for the governor. Uh, normally that's not mm -hmm. uh, done by the state treasurer, but he's done yeoman work uh, and gets uh, high marks from uh, both sides of the mm -hmm. aisle out at the Capitol. Well, and I, and I can't, uh, you know, I don't want to underestimate the importance of having someone who's managing those large sums of money making good decisions. The treasurer isn't just counting the money, isn't just accountable for the money. The treasurer helps make really important decisions about how that money is going to be invested. And no one ever wants to hear that one of the state investments lost money, but at the same time, you hate to get this much interest rate when you could have gotten this much. And I think Scott has made some really wise decisions uh, through the years. And, and I think his background in banking has, has, has really paid off. Um, Scott Meacham was today's guest on The Verdict, and uh, we want to give you some information about how you can go to our website and talk about a guest that you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. It's really easy to do. You just go on the web and type in theverdict.tv, and when you get there, tell us about a guest you'd like to see or a topic you'd like to see covered. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.